everybody. My name is Brett Emerson. I'm the oldest of the Emerson clan. We've got quite a few of us that are living around this area. Uh, not living around this area, but are part of the Emerson clan. This is kind of how the big show started. The Emersons. Uh, I'm the oldest. Um, I'm going on towards 40, and I thought that they called me up and said, what can you do? And I said, well, I can probably talk about myself and make it all about me. So that's what I'm going to try to do. Make it all about me. I'm, it's all retrospective. I'm living ain't easy. A retrospective in pictures about my life, our life, and how hard it is to be who we are and what's going to happen to us as we grow older. Who we are, what made us, and what we are, our experiences, and how that's going to work out. I was born a poor black child <laughs> in Barberton, Ohio. My dad worked in the, in the chemical plant as a mechanical engineer. My mother made cheese sandwiches. Not the, not the small cheese sandwiches, but the thick Velveeta cheese sandwiches with mayonnaise on both sides and Wonder Bread. How, much, how, good, how good was that to grow up? Just, or you didn't have ham and cheese, it was just cheese. It wonderful. And what, the best part of it was that we grew up and we would sit there and ask for them and we would eat them on the dryer. Now, we didn't know why we sat on the dryer and ate them on the dryer. We were only five years old. But what we did was we ate cheese sandwiches and sat on the warm, revolving dryer. <laughs> Later in my life, I figured out why that was funny, why that was great, and why I loved it. And I still love it today. Once in a while, I can do anything, no one's at home. <laughs> so we grew up in Barberton, Ohio. My mom and dad decided, well, this isn't the city. City life's not for us. We don't really want to be there. We want to move, maybe. My grandparents and his grandparents lived on a farm. So mom and dad decided we're going to all move down to the farm. The farming life is for us. For over 100 years, we had grown up, at, my family had lived on Emerson Road. The farm was not in a city, near a city, it was in the middle of nowhere, and it's, we, the road was named after our farm. Can you imagine the, the, the intensity that that takes up where your family has to take on the farm? They wanted me to grow up like this gentleman right here. I think I could get close, I could have gained a little more weight, but I, 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 I haven't yet. We grew up on Emerson Road, we lived around the Amish. All Amish are three sides of us. We lived in a very small town called Apple Creek, Ohio. This is the electric Amish they're going to play later tonight. <laughs> Ezekiel, Jonas, and Menno. We live next to 13, to a member, to the owners, 13 families, 13 people, 13 kids. Ver, the two people, they would come and, and clean our house, they would come and babysit us, they were almost part of the family. Verba and Verna, those were their real names. They had a brother and sister who were, who were dwarfs named Abe and Fanny. Fanny would come over, they would come over and babysit us, and what did they want to do? They wanted to watch TV because they can't do that as Amish. Well, what they want to watch, they always wanted to watch Witness. That was the God's honest truth. They wanted to come and watch Witness. And they would, they would pick it apart. They would pick it apart and say, they would say, now you know that silo. That corn doesn't sit up on the top like that. That doesn't come down like that. That's not how we do it there. So we grew up, we grew up in, in the farming life. These, but these are the formative years. These are the years when you grow up and people can make you who you are or screw you up as much as possible. This is the time when you learn how to act, you learn how to be, and these people have so much influence in your life. One of the first things that happened to me was I needed glasses. Four years old and I needed glasses. This is what they wanted me to be. This is what I ended up as. I got in a clinker fight with John Orr in seven, in, in, when I was seven years old, and I was the fault because he threw the clinker at me and hit me in the eye. I had to pay for it. Now, I didn't have to pay for it with my credit card because I didn't have it. They had the passbook. I had to write the number one six. That's how much my how much my how much the lens was to replace. I had to write that, and that was two thirds of all my money. I had 24, then I did minus 16. That made me the frugal person that I am because I could realize right then, damn, that cost me two thirds of my net worth. <laughs> so you go to school, and who do you meet? Mindy Pepler. First grade, kindergarten, you always have this crush. You're going to have this crush forever. Okay? There's this girl with little pigtails that sits in the back. She's the cutest girl you ever saw in your life. I could only want to be and hang out with her because she was cool. But I could never do that because I was the fat kid. <laughs> I was the fat kid all through school. Not the, not, the, not the huge weight. Now, this could. I went fucking the first date, but I never had a first date until senior high school. That was the unfortunate part of this. So I would love to do that, but I couldn't. So all through school, I was the fat kid. Not the overweight, huge fit, but just enough that people would notice and say, oh, look at him, well, that's too bad. <laughs> so growing up at the farm, what do we have to do? We don't have a lot to do. We don't have a lot of city things to do. We don't go play basketball. What do we do? We, we work on the farm. So once a time of year, the fair comes up. What do we do? We make farming a competition. We show cows. This could have been me. We're dressed in white showing cows every year with the fair queen. Showing, showing, giving you the trophy. Now, I was really good at this. I was really good at showing cows. I could lead them around and show them how. And 
every year, you have, you, I did it for eight years. By my third year, I was showing a cow, I got second. I was lined up, they line all the cows up in second, then they come in front of you and they um, tell you how come you came in first, how come you came in second. I came in second, judge says, well this guy had a good cow, he didn't really know how to show it good, he, he, he would, have, would have probably got first, but he had a beef halter. Now this is all minutiae, you don't need to know, but the thing was, my mom went out that day and bought the halter and caused me to get second. That's caused me so much grief, and my mother so much grief all our lives. There's always been this rift. Well, Mom, I would have gotten first, but you fucked it up for me. We still talk about that every time we get together. Okay, here's milking cows. We live in a farm. This is the dirtiest picture I could find because all the milking cows, but really, this is the dirtiest picture I could find. Look at that horrible picture. Look at that. I, you don't have to, I had to go to the end of the internet to find this picture. There's, there's the end of the internet. Then there's, there's narcoleptic hookers, and then there's the end. This picture was right before that. This really talks about farming and what's all involved in doing farming. Here's the one picture. This is Shannon. This is Shannon. This is my dad. This is part of our lives, birthing calves. Dad would get up at 4.30 in the morning. If the cows had a calf at 8.30 at night, Brett, go pull that calf. Shannon, come on down. Hold the tail. I'm going to stick my arm up the calf's ass, cow's ass and pull the calf out. This is a real life picture of what farming is like. It's not nearly as glamorous as you might think. It's very, really very hard. Okay. Remember that whole cheese sandwich thing? My dad was a wrestler. Obviously, we all tried to be wrestlers. I was a fat kid wrestler. Seventh grade comes on. I can't hardly, I can't hardly believe it. I can never make it. I can never live up to what, the, what my parents were, gonna, my dad was going to be. I tried to wrestle. I couldn't wrestle. One of the other things that kept me back was. My dad, being the liberal son of a bitch he was, decided that we should try alternative fuels and we should sell coal. Not natural gas, coal. Remember the whole clinker thing we talked about? That's a byproduct of the coal. We would, we had a coal yard, and when I was in seventh, eighth grade, I would have to go out and on Saturday and shovel coal in, into Amish buggies so they could pick it back and burn their stoves. This kept me back from really liking, really feeling good about things and being able to enjoy my seventh grade. But that was the way it was. You worked hard on the farm. Now, the next thing you know, you go through school, the next thing you know, the big things in life, you turn 16. You get a car, right? You get this freedom that you never had. Even on the farm, you can go away because there's no neighbors you play with. You've got to get in a car to drive somewhere else. I get a 1979 Oldsmobile Custom Cruiser. <laughs> diesel. <laughs> Swear to God, diesel. That's I can do that. So, what happens? The biggest memory I have of this, I go out, to, uh, I go out after a basketball game with my friend Rod Miller. Debbie and Robin Wolf. We're sitting there, we're driving into town, all of a sudden steam starts coming out of the car. Oh shit, I'm 16 years old, I'm just driving the car. Worst thing, I'm driving a station wagon. I'm going almost like a double date a station wagon. So I'm sitting there in the restaurant, we all had one restaurant that wasn't named, it, wasn't, it didn't say Eat at Joe's, it was called Pizza Hut. It came to our, when I was 16 years old. We drive up, we pull in, everyone's there for the game, we sit down, Rod sitting across me, Debbie, and then Robin. Oh, Robin, she had the best tits. Oh, God, sorry. <laughs> Anyways, the waitress comes up and goes, do you, do you know anything about the car that's burning in the parking lot? I said, no, it's not burning, it's just overheating, leave me alone. Put my head down and sat there, and then everyone saw it, and everyone looked at me and made fun of me for the rest of my life. It was a horrible moment.